one of the other uh, lectures, I, I believe, that you did was called Empire Exposed. Yes. And it seemed like a reference to the TV show Empire. And it was. It was uh, partially, but it was uh, a breakdown and an assessment of some of the uh, negative imagery that was in it and the impact that it has on the psyche. Uh, really, the whole message was done because that was what was popping at the time. It was very popular. But what we did is we, in the message, we waged war on the spin doctors and the architects of confusion and the social engineers that use television programs or radio programs. I said, man, why do they call it a program? Do you know the definition of a program? Is the installations of commands into a device in advance of the device being turned on. So when you turn it on, it'll automatically carry out what you programmed it to do. So most of us, unfortunately, when we watch television, we think that we're looking at reality. But we're not looking at reality. They are actually creating reality. So it's tell a vision. It's telling us a vision. A vision is an image of the future. It's telling us what the future, not, not what the present looks like, but what the future should look like. And there is a lot of madness in the atmosphere when it comes to our expression of black artistry that is telling a bad vision or producing a bad future for us. So I wanted to, to go to war with it and get us to turn off uh, uh, the idiot box for a few hours a day and pick up a book so that we can become uh, powerful and productive. Because leaders are not TV watchers. Leaders are readers. Well, speaking of TV, one of the really popular shows on television uh, this year was The Godfather of Harlem. Yes. Uh, did you watch that at all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I did. Okay. And the Nation of Islam was a central character in this show, including Malcolm X and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes. Well, number one, what did you think about the depiction of Elijah Muhammad and, and Malcolm X in this, uh, in this show? I think that it, was, uh, it wasn't strong, it was weak, and it was watered down. But I kind of expected it whenever the disclaimer came on, on the first episode, where it said, events have been fictionalized for dramatic effect. I, I, last I checked, fictionalized means that lied. We're getting ready to lie about something so that it'd be a little more exciting when it comes on. So I kind of expected it uh, to be what it was. And unfortunately, uh, Vlad, that this uh, docu-series is following the same personality that it always has followed in Hollywood and when it comes to depicting our great ones uh, uh, from the past. It's always a diligently compared, translated from former translations, King James Version of the history of the great ones that have come. So, you know, some of the fictionalization I did not like. We did not like the depiction uh, of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we did not like even the depiction of the way that they had uh, Malcolm X. You know, we don't walk around with our hands in our pockets. That's a mark of laziness. We don't walk around with our shoulders drooped old down as members of the Nation of Islam. Our code is quick thinking fast moving, clean inside and out, right down to the modern times. So those kind of uh, depictions. I didn't like that the, the series depicted and undermined the real power source of the transformation of the nation of Islam. We have never transformed anybody from drugs by chaining them to a bed. We've always transformed people by putting knowledge in their head. So to undermine it and say we had to chain people up to get, no, we got just off of teaching the knowledge of self in the same way that that student enrollment number one gave me a new mindset for school, that same student enrollment number one has given the heroin addict, the crack addict, the sex addict, whatever you addicted to, when you learn that you are that great, you feel too dignified to reach down for a bottle or down for a needle or down for some pills, you start reaching up into your mind for intelligence. So it's, it's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, remixes and watered down. And as they say in the, they would say it in the streets, they stepped on, 
it, it was this, the story of Malcolm X was stepped on. They put some cut on it, and they went to the store and got some B12 and some isotol, isotol and some baking soda and fattened it up and re-rocked it and sold it back like, like this is how it was, but it really was edited and revised. Bumpy Johnson did not even meet Malcolm X until 1963. Mm, I didn't so, know that. So there's a book out written by his wife, Bumpy, uh, Bumpy Johnson's wife. It's called The Harlem Godfather, Ellsworth Bumpy Johnson, written by his wife. And that story that she tells about the way he thought, functioned, and operated, interacting with the nation, what he thought of us, versus the way that it was depicted is uh, a great contrast. So I would hope that they would uh, make their mind up uh, if they get a second running, another season, that they would do a little more research and at least give us some better haircuts and take them steak and shake bow ties off of us and have us looking like we're supposed to look. Come interview us to find out the true story and the code of ethics that we operate under and give us the accurate depiction instead of doing what Hollywood has always done, which is watered it down, edited, revised it, given to the world a translation from former translations, King James Version of everything and everybody that's been great in our community. So we didn't like that. 